Send these foul beasts into the abyss. If you're anything like me, two things happen when you see the battle in East Tira. First, shivers run down your spine as the soldiers of Gondor rally to defend their city. Second, you're wondering how many orcs are there. My name is David, and today I'm going to show you not only how many orcs were there, but we're also going to discuss if that was enough orcs to take the White City of Gondor, Minas Tirith. Calculating the number of orcs is problematic for two reasons. First, we need a scale to measure the scene by, and second, we need the widest shot possible to measure how many orcs are there. In Return of the King, there are two wide aerial views of Sauron's forces. The first is when Denethor sees them overlooking the Citadel's ramparts. The other one is when the Nazgul's attack Minas Tirith to destroy the trebuchets. The best one is when Denethor is overlooking the city. This is because we get a clear sense of scale, because there are a few stray orcs away from the main orc army that we can use to get a sense of scale. The Nazgul shot just shows us the army and we can't see an individual orc, but it does look awesome. One orc is about 4 by 5 pixels, at least according to the stray orc that we can see. So that makes one orc about 20 pixels square. Before I go further, I had to use a few other assumptions in order to determine how many orcs Peter Jackson intended to show us. First is the size of the orcs per pixel will vary with distance, meaning the orcs closer to the wall will appear larger than those at the back. So my calculation will work for the orcs up at the front, but less so for the orcs at the rear. Second, we are never shown a consistent view of the orc ranks. In the wide shots of the orcs, they are massive rectangular formations, or maniples as I like to call them. But in the closer shots we see, there are wider gaps between each formation. Basically where I'm going with this is that we never have a 100% con consistent view of how many orcs occupy any given space at any given time within the movie. Therefore, I will be solving for a group of orc maniples and I will treat the entire space as having orcs in it. I hope by doing so, I can account for the orcs that are shown elsewhere, other times not present in the same space. It's also important to note that even in this shot where Denethor is overlooking the city, there's even more orcs to Denethor's left than are shown in the screen. Now you're probably asking, what is a maniple? Well, a maniple is a square or rectangular formation of men used by the Roman army. A dead orcs technically called their formations a maniple, but that's okay. Anyway, back to Minas Tirith. Now, because there is no consistent representation of the orc ar army, my analysis here will be limited to determining the minimum number of orcs that Peter Jackson has shown us in Return of the King especially as represented in the screenshot. I'm going to solve for the first two ranks of orcs using the 20 pixel squared equals one orc calculation I described earlier. And I'll be using it on both rows of orcs because like I said, I can't determine a sense of scale for that second rank. So I'm just gonna stick with the one measurement I can trust. And since my goal is to determine the minimum number of orcs, I feel that this discrepancy doesn't really impact or prevent us from discussing if the amount of orcs Peter Jackson is trying to show us could still have taken the city of Minas Tirith. And trust me, the number is still really big, so we can still have a fun discussion about it. Also, this shot with Denethor overlooking the city and seeing the orc army shows us approximately half the orc army. So it's very ideal for that reason. So after I finish my calculations, I just have to multiply it by two and we'll have a good sense at the minimum number of orcs that were here. The math for this part is actually pretty simple. The first section is 1,252 pixels by 166. This comes out to be about 207,832 square pixels. And then if we divide that number by 20, pixels, square pixels per orc, we're left with about 10,391 orcs in the first section alone. The second section is 812 pixels by 166. 
and this comes out to be about 134,792 square pixels. We'll again divide this number by 20, and we're left, left with 6,740 orcs. If we add these two sections together, we get 17,131 orcs on the left flank of Mordor's besieging force. If we multiply this number by two, assuming the forces are mostly symmetrical on either side to account for the right flank, there are at least 34,262 orcs. It's basically 35,000 orcs as we try to account for all the orcs that we are not shown and accounting for a little bit of the other orcs in the back. I'm going to, in my mind, I like to think there's probably like 10,000 back there, but again, I don't have a sense of scale, so I'm not going to reference that number, but don't worry, I'm aware there are many more orcs. But even then, 35,000 gives us a lot to talk about. Now, if you're looking at the screen and you're thinking, wait, there's a lot of empty space in those squares I solved for. Yes, that's true, but remember, in the movie, from scene to scene, we are never shown a consistent view of the orcs and where there are gaps in their formation and where the orcs actually are. So again, that's why I consider that empty space negligible, at least in terms of how the movie presents it. The math for the orc army was actually pretty straightforward, but now we're gonna do the really, the part that I thought was much more complicated, and that was how many Gondorian soldiers there were at this battle. Most of the Gondorian soldiers we see in the movie are on the outer wall of the city. If I can calculate the length of the wall and figure out about how many average sized men could fit on that wall, we'll get a reasonable understanding of how many soldiers were defending the city. To calculate the length of the outer wall is actually really straightforward. The equation is 2 times pi times r standing for the radius, which will give us the circumference or perimeter of that wall. Now, in the case of Minas Tirith, part of the outer wall isn't fully constructed because it goes into the, into the mountains. So because of that, I will use one half instead of two in the equation, which is basically saying three quarters of a circle. And that will give us the full circumference of the wall. Now for the hardest part, finding the radius. We have no idea how big it is. Fortunately, there is one giant stone rampart going through six of the seven levels of the city. In Tolkien's universe, Minas Tirith had seven concentric levels evenly spaced, each enclosed by a wall. In Peter Jackson's masterpiece, we still have arguably seven levels that are presumably concentric and more or less evenly spaced. I actually did the math um, both ways with seven levels and I could, and I would argue that there are only six levels, true levels, in Peter Jackson's masterpiece. However, after I did the math, the difference only came out to be a few hundred, like less than 300 men. So because the math between the six and seven levels is insignificant, I'm going to continue with only seven levels for this discussion because that's what Tolkien said. The fact these levels are concentric and evenly spaced is critical. That means the rampart is divided equally between these six levels. After I calculate the length of the rampart through those six levels, I can divide it by six and then multiply it by seven to see how far it would have gone through all seven in order to get the radius. To measure the length of the rampart, I use the scene of Aragorn's coronation, where Aragorn and all of the other attendees kneel before the hobbits. Now the calculation for this section was actually pretty difficult, and that's because there are lots of sources that tell you the average height of a man, but there are fewer resources available to tell you the average width of a man. And so that was pretty difficult, let alone of a kneeling person. Um, so I searched the internet, I found this one graphic that I thought was pretty useful, and then I checked the height they gave against Wikipedia's results for the average height, and they were pretty similar, so that's why I'm using this graphic and the length of nine inches for the average width of a man, and then to account for their kneeling length, I just tripled it to 27 to hopefully account for like the length of their head, their back, and their leg, and then a couple extra inches 
spare just so they wouldn't all be like touching each other. To get a sense of scale, I used a closer shot of this scene when it's pretty tight and we can see the first full circle. And so this way I can easily count how many people are here. The length of one person in this scene is four pixels, at least on my computer screen. And the length from the furthest person to the entrance, which is also the end of the circle, is 227 pixels. Pixels, not pickles, pixels. I divide the 227 pixels by the four pixels to get about 57 people. Or if you want to be precise, that is 56.75 people in that scene. Now we're going to zoom out to the widest view of the rampart. In this shot, the circular part is 112 pixels. And remember, there are still 57 people there as determined from my previous equation. I measured the total length of the rampart in this scene and it is approximately 587 pixels. So between the 112 pixels and the 587, which is the pixels in the circular section, and the total length of the rampart, there is a ratio of about 5.2. So if I multiply the 57 people, which occupy the space in the 112 pixels, and multiply that by 5.2, to see how many people occupy the rest of that space, the answer comes out to be roughly 300 people. And then to get the actual length in a standard form of measurement, I multiply that by 27 inches, which is approximately the length of a person kneeling, and divide that number by 12 in order to get our answer in feet. And the answer was roughly 672 feet. Now we are almost there. So the rampart is 672 feet long, which is approx approximately 6 sevenths of the radius, because remember the rampart goes through six of the seven concentric and evenly spaced levels. So after dividing this number by six and multiplying it by seven, we are left with 784.2 feet. Now with this number, we finally have the radius, which we will now plug into our equation for the circumference of the wall. And remember, part of the wall isn't there because it's because Minas Tirith is built into a mountain range. So with that, we're gonna put it into our, into our equation of 1.5 times pi times the radius, which is 784.2 feet, which gives us a grand total of 3,695.4 feet. Now I'm also gonna divide this number by two feet, and that's because according to that nice little graphic I found for the width of a man, in addition to his height, it also gives us the average length of a man shoulder to, to shoulder. And approximately in that graphic, graphic, it's actually 18 inches or one and a half feet. But to account for the armor that the soldiers are wearing, I gave them an extra six inches space to account for that. So that's why we're using two feet. So once we divide that number by two, we are left with 1,847 0.7 soldiers on the first wall of Minas Tirith, or <clears throat> if you like, that is 1,847 soldiers and room for one hobbit. Now we are also going to multiply this number by three because throughout the movie, we are shown that there are at least three ranks of men deep on these walls. So the final answer is there are 5,543 Gondorian soldiers facing an army of no less than 35,000 orcs. But let's face it, there's probably an additional 10,000 orcs at least coming into the city of Minas Tirith, as we can see in the white, in those other white shots. I have no scale to account for those soldiers or those, those orc soldiers at that distance. So that's why we're going with the 30, 35,000 orcs. So what do you think? Do you believe 5,500 Gondorian soldiers can hold out against the forces of Mortar all on their own? In their defense, <laughs> no pun intended, they do have the defender's advantage. They have walls and obviously even if they get through this first wall, there are six other walls for them to rally behind. I think in a normal siege situation, it is possible that maybe they could have held out on their own. But then again, this is Lord of the Rings and there's Nazgul and trolls around. So I think anything is possible here. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. 
Also, if you love Lord of the Rings and epic battles, I plan to be starting a Rise of the Witch King Let's Play soon. Together, we'll experience how the Witch King became one of Sauron's most deadly and powerful servants. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.